First Church family and welcome to another Teaching Tuesday video. My name is Todd Lovell and I'm one of your pastors coming to you during this most blessed Holy Week during these strange times uh, that we're all living in. I want to remind you uh, before we get started that you can find a companion devotional link in the video description right below this video. Uh, just click that link and you'll see a PDF with today's scripture and a short reflection for your own personal study uh, during this week. I want to talk to you all today about a word that may seem strange during these uncertain times. The word I want to talk to you about today is the word rejoice. The Apostle Paul tells us to rejoice in the Lord always, and we find that exhortation in his letter uh, to the Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. I'll stop now and put that text up on the screen so that you can read it and reflect on it. Make sure you look over on the, on the screen or on the PDF to the things to observe section to make your own observations about the text. Uh, and I invite you to ask that the Lord will speak to you through these holy words and that your heart may be receptive to hear God's voice through them. I invite you to go ahead now and pause this video and spend a few moments reading and reflecting on our text for today. So the Apostle Paul tells us to rejoice in the Lord always. Really, Paul? Rejoice always? I mean, rejoicing in every situation is no easy task, especially over the past few weeks. Many of us have probably felt like we don't have much to rejoice about. But the apostle says rejoice always. Yes, always. In fact, Paul is so sure that we didn't hear him correctly the first time that he repeats himself. I will say it again. Rejoice. Now, this is not some superficial encouragement. Paul is not telling us to just smile and pretend that everything is okay. He's not telling us to just grin and bear it or just be glad that things aren't worse. No, Paul is talking about a rejoicing that is real and abiding, that springs up from deep within our souls. But what if we look around at our world and our life and we can't find anything to rejoice about? Well, Paul seems to know that this is where our mind is headed. So he tells us not to be anxious about anything. Don't be anxious. Know that the Lord is near and trust that he knows the cries of your heart. Find the next part particularly interesting. He tells us to offer up prayers and petitions with thanksgiving. I mean, is that weird to anyone else? I mean, Paul is telling us to pray and petition God for the things that we don't have, but to do so with thanksgiving. I mean, what are you supposed to be thankful for if you're asking for something you don't have? Jesus helps us see why we can rejoice in our asking. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 8, Jesus says that our Father in heaven knows our needs even before we ask him. So we can rejoice because our Heavenly Father is not surprised by our petitions. In fact, on the contrary, he's actually honored when we come to him and ask because our asking demonstrates our trust in him and our thanksgiving demonstrates our belief that God is gracious enough to provide. It reminds me of the victory formation in football. Do you know what that is? The defense makes some last second stop on the goal line to win the game and the offense comes back out on the field to take a knee and run out the clock. Now, if you've ever been at a football game when that happens, you know that the crowd doesn't wait around until the clock strikes zero to begin cheering, do they? No, as soon as that stop is made, the crowd goes wild. And even though there's still time on the clock, people begin rejoicing as if they've already received the victory. It also reminds me of when one of my children comes up to me and asks for a snack. Daddy, can I have some crackers, please? Sure, I say. And then all the way to the pantry, my child will be saying, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Daddy. There's this explosion of joyful thanksgiving even before the request is answered. And I think that's what it means to give thanks, even in the midst of your petitions. We give thanks because we trust that God hears our prayers. And more than that, we trust that God is able to answer them. You see, we don't rejoice because we feel like we have everything under control. We rejoice because we know the one who is in control. We don't rejoice because we always have everything we need. We rejoice because we know the one who has the power to supply all our needs. We don't rejoice because we understand everything that's happening in our world. We rejoice because we know the one who gives a peace 
that passes all understanding. Notice the language that Paul uses throughout this passage. I mean, he's always using words like always, all, anything, every. Paul is talking about an all-encompassing promise of God. There is no situation in this life where Christians are not commanded to rejoice because nothing, not even COVID-19, can separate us from the ever-present love of Christ. And I believe that is something to rejoice in. So friends, please stay safe. Stay home as much as you can, and more importantly, do everything in your power to stay in love with God. Remember to like and share uh, this video on social media with your own thoughts. Remember to use the hashtag Teaching Tuesdays. May God bless you during this time of quarantine, especially during this most holy of weeks as we look forward to the suffering, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus. May the God who is ever present with you continue to remind you that you are never alone. May the God who reveals his deep desire for you in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ continue to hold you close in his steadfast love. And may the God who turns your sorrow into rejoicing replace your anxiety with his peace that passes all understanding. May the Lord bless you and keep you until we meet again. Amen.